Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day to start things off. A lot of these are rumors, unconfirmed. No one knows exactly what's going on. The last couple of days, for some reason, in the cryptocurrency space, last week, have been filled with an enormous amount of news that has not been clarified, uh, confirmed, what have you. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into it. A couple of days ago, someone on Twitter by the name of Crypt Hawk said, Seems like it's out. Ripple acquired MoneyGram, leading to a huge access deal with Walmart. More to come, believe me. Unfortunately, without official uh, communication from MoneyGram or Ripple, it's hard to believe the tweet. However, Ripple and MoneyGram do have a history. In 2018, the two firms entered into a partnership to modernize payments. As part of the partnership, MoneyGram, one of the world's largest money transfer companies in the world, would pilot XRP in their payment flows. Additionally, MoneyGram would be integrated into one of Ripple's products known as XVIA. Ripple then said, MoneyGram will pilot the use of XRP, the native digital asset of the XRP ledger, in payment flows through XRapid, Ripple's solution for on-demand liquidity. They said, we are excited about this pilot and long-term strategic partnership with MoneyGram by using a digital asset like XRP that settles in three seconds or less. They can now move money as quickly as information, end quote. The weirdest part about all of this is, for those who were not here in 2018, or rather the uh, beginning times of 2018, what ended up happening was is that a lot of people, in my opinion, I think other people also share the sentiment a tiny bit. People thought that the market was going to go back up in 2018. At the beginning of 2018, people thought that for some reason, even as we were having the market kind of collapse into itself, that the market would pick back up. It was a huge sentiment that by the summer of 2018, that, mar that the market would be back up where it was before. This is when we were getting calls for a 50, 60, 70 thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of 2018. And it was believed widely that when Bitcoin had shot up to twenty thousand dollars at the end of 2017 and it had fallen to around, I think it was 13 to 15 thousand somewhere around there, that it was just, you know, a bit of a rest. Market had overdone itself and the prices were going to go back up. And this is around the same exact time that we had an, an immense amount of news from different companies around the world about their uh, partnerships with cryptocurrency companies, that they were using cryptocurrencies, that they were selling to own crypto company. You know, it was, it, was a, it was a great time, great time of optimism, even though prices were going down. And I guess in hindsight, we should have all seen that the market was a bit too hot. Anyway, the point is, it was around this time that it was MoneyGram and Western Union who had come forward and announced that they were going to be using XRP and or testing it and or piloting it for a tiny bit to see exactly if it was good for them, how well it was going to do for their customers and business and so and so and blah, blah, blah. This is once again, all at the exact same time, at the beginning of 2018. So it was this really weird euphoric time. And since then, I think we heard um, non-confirmations, if I can say it this way, both from MoneyGram and Western Union about them, I think not explicitly not using cryptocurrencies for their services, uh, but that they would continue testing them. And I think it was either MoneyGram or Western Union. I, I want to say one, um, Western Union who had announced that they saw no a significant uh, impact to their business for being able to use XRP. I made a whole video about it. This was sometime summer of last year. And it came down to the fact that if you use XRP, I think the the network fee comes down to like, I think a tenth of one cent or something insane like that. And when you looked at Western Union's actual uh how much money western union made from people sending money through their platform i think western union was making anywhere from i think eight to 25 percent so clearly it wasn't advantageous for their systems because they're greedy and they want to charge their customers a lot of money so that's a bit of a backdrop as to why this news caught the attention of a lot of people because we know that they do have a history that they have spoken before that in the beginning of 2018 and up until maybe summertime, this was a really big frenzy. This was in the news a lot because everyone was speculating if MoneyGram and if Western Union and I think a couple of other companies who also have kind of shied away uh, uh, did plan on indeed using XRP. And I think once again, this is just my opinion because it also ties into the rest of the news that we're going to be talking about. I think that a lot of companies have shied away from any kind of talk about cryptocurrencies, whether it be for regulation or whether it be for... Uh, I still think myself that a lot of people aren't going to release news or very bullish, insane, whatever kind of news you want to call it until we pass by a $10,000 Bitcoin. I think people need a 
a grand confirmation that we are once again in a bull market before anyone releases any type of information because what we saw during the course of 2018 is that as prices continue to go lower, the news started sliding back a little tiny bit and we weren't receiving as much news as we were at the beginning of 2018 because if you release news, any type of news during a bear market, we had some incredible and I mean incredible, like imagine the news that MoneyGram and Western Union were going to be using XRP like that. It was, this was very significant because we had a lot of news from corporations and, and entities who were thinking about using cryptocurrency and they were very open about it as well. So I believe, in my opinion, me, that these companies are probably going to be using cryptocurrency sometime in the near future. That is to say, when we do eventually one day have a bull run once again, but I think they're all too afraid to announce any good news. Because the bad market, air quotes, bad market, absorbs it, and it doesn't do as well as if you release this information during a time when prices are skyrocketing. Just a bit of a backdrop to all of that stuff. I had to explain because with, without context, it sounds a little insane, especially for those who have jumped back into the market or who have no idea what I was talking about. Now you understand. Here we go. Since the partnership happened... It has been a quiet encounter between the two companies. However, on the 5th of June, the crypto community on social media contributed to the possibility that Ripple may have acquired MoneyGram on its official XRP chat. The XRP community was not buying any section of the rumor. It said it was funny while it lasted. So, so, blah, 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 blah. Where's the actual thing? Uh, for some reason, and this is maybe just me in my head, uh, people were saying that Ripple isn't actually able to acquire MoneyGram Someone said it makes little sense for them to do so. If they did, they would be entering into competition with every other cross-border remittance transfer company, i.e. their entire client base, which goes against a lot of what they stand for as they have openly and not stated that they want to work with the system, not destroy it. I don't think the rumor that Ripple would acquire MoneyGram is them trying to destroy the system. If anything, it's still working with it because the entire purpose is to streamline payments and to also use the XRP cryptocurrency around the world as a means of payment. So them, it's, that would be like the people from Ripple buying a portion of a bank. They're not trying to destroy the system. They're just working with it but by using their own cryptocurrency. What was the other really interesting part? Blah, 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 so and so. So what we do know for a fact, it says apart from the rumors, it has been confirmed that American Express, a financial services company, has actually partnered with Ripple Here's the actual other thing that we have right here. So and so and so, Vice President of American Express, Colin O. Flaherty, okay, speaking on the last day of Money 2020 event in, in Amsterdam, confirmed that the financial services firm was using Ripple's X current solution. In November 2018, it was announced that American Express would use Ripple's technology for cross border payments. They said Ripple offers instantaneous point to point conversations between the sender and the receiver of funds, and that provides a real opportunity to alleviate most of the issues our customers are facing. American Express is working closely with Ripple to expand its fintech, uh, reach, fintech, reach, focusing on China and the U.S.-British market. In the case of the former, in a joint venture with Leon Leon, Amex has been approved as a card processing payments processor, which it gives to lucrative Chinese, blah, well, I'm not I'm reading the rest of that. Anyway, so we have that confirmed that they actually, and this is where I, I think it gets very interesting because a lot of people, first of all, side note, uh... X current can use the XRP cryptocurrency. I mentioned that, or rather, I did not mention that before in another video, and I think a lot of people didn't really get what I was trying to say. If, if you are into Ripple and or XRP, you understand that X current has at this point integrated XRP into its systems, meaning people who are using X current can also use the XRP cryptocurrency, and it's no longer just exclusive to X Rapid. So a lot of people sometimes mistake if a company says that they're using X current that they're not using the cryptocurrency, which indeed they actually can. The point is, a lot of people, uh, and I think it's because of that confusion, don't consider a lot of news like this very significant because they assume that if someone is using X current, that they're not using the XRP cryptocurrency, which once again, they can. But the fact that, and I, I don't know, I have my own opinions on a whole bunch of things. Uh, it comes down to this kind of weird confusion about the cryptocurrency space a lot of misinformation that was spread between 2016 17 and the beginning of 2018 for people who did not want to learn about ripple did not care about xrp x current they had they they had confused themselves as to what all of these things are like i still see people talking about in the comment section that xrp can be printed at will i'm glad like within the last three days i saw only two of those comments uh luckily 
99.9% of the other comments actually understand what's going on right now that you can't simply it's 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 nonsensical for people to think these things or for even to try and spread this misinformation. I mean, if you want to continue believing those things then definitely go for it. But the team at Ripple have done a lot over the last couple of years to acquire major partnerships with these other companies. Like imagine the significance of a company that was only three, four, five years old being able to partner with American Express and actually have them use their technology cryptocurrency anything in accordance with that uh it's incredibly significant and i think a lot of people lose it along the way but these are the instances once again in my opinion that i feel that people will kind of uh understand once prices start moving we still are not in a situation right now where the prices are moving so dramatically high that people are kind of pricing these things in i think that institutional investors that is to say very rich people and people buying over the counter have started to price these things into their metrics when they're buying these cryptocurrencies over the counter because they understand where these things are going and they understand the significance of a company like ripple partnering with american express or even like we were talking about before partnering what was it with 70 to 80 percent of the banks within india and 200 other banks around the world these are very significant and i think a lot of people uh let this slide by them because of misinformation or whatever the actual case might be anyway at the moment there's no confirmation or clarity at all if ripple has bought moneygram has bought a stake in moneygram or anything of the sort i think it would not be unbelievable for them to have done so or for them to even have had plans at some point to think about doing so it's not them trying to destroy the system that's not a destruction of the system they're still working with a regulatory compliant company it's just that they would simply make sure to integrate xrp for their payments as it's going back and forth and on top of all of that there's still a bit more like i said this week for some reason has been very jam-packed with rumors and here we go next up where is it a viral tweet from the third biggest commercial bank in thailand has now vanished leaving ripple and xrp fans wondering what the financial powerhouse is up to the tweet from siam's commercial bank official twitter account that teased an imminent announcement about an xrp system has since been deleted for those who have not seen the tweet here it is for those who are not looking at the screen it says from scb thailand XRP system will be announced soon. Please follow our official schedule on social media uh, again. Uh, the delete, delete, ah, wow. The deleted tweet from SBC triggered a flurry of excitement and rumors on Reddit and Twitter with users over the moon on the potential for the first commercial integration of XRP from a major bank. And then we had this over here. They, de they deleted the tweet. CM Bank so and so. They said with so and so, blah, 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 blah. The banks are nice. Blah, 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 blah. So and so soon. The actually the bank actually deleted the tweet and then retweeted something else and they said we are so sorry for the previous information of the previous post. As of now, we have no plan on using XRP. Here's the actual first tweet that we were just talking about. What I find the weirdest, at least for me, um, I had mentioned before this was about a year and, and and some change ago. We had a situation on Twitter where another company had announced that they were going to be using a cryptocurrency i can't remember exactly what it was but it was it was a really weird small tweet they also deleted it and said oh yeah no no sorry that was a mistake i understand you know we all have smartphones i assume at least 95 percent of us have smartphones when you're on your smartphone sometimes your fingers can move around you type things that you don't really plan on typing i think it's very uh the odds of typing the letters xrp randomly on your keyboard are very slim being able to type the words xrp system will soon be announced period randomly and then clicking tweet are also pretty random being able to type the words xrp system will be announced soon please follow our official schedule on social media again period and then clicking tweet a little slim to none what i think actually happened is and this is once again my opinion i feel like they probably have some type of a non-disclosure agreement, meaning they are probably in a major partnership with Ripple and or XRP. Someone from Ripple and or XRP noted to them, hey, you can't give out this information yet. And therefore, they deleted the tweet. Uh, I would understand if, like I said, if they had entered the words or the, letter, the letters XRP and then clicked tweet and quickly deleted it, but once again, those are very specific letters that you have to hit on your keyboard or on your phone to be able to send out a tweet like that. They send an entire message. 
Uh, why would the SCB of Thailand know what XRP was and also type in an entire message that they're going to be using or announcing the usage of XRP sometime soon in the future and then delete it? Uh, we've had stuff like this before. As of right now, we know that the team from Ripple has over, I think it's at, at this point, it has to be over 250 partnerships with different banks around the world. The people from, almost said Twitter, the people from Ripple announced a couple of days ago, I don't think I entered entered it, uh, had it in a video that I think every week that they're acquiring, I think anywhere from two, three, or four new banking partnerships, I one can assume that a large number of these banks are probably going to be using XRP, but I feel like at this point, once again, that everyone's holding back their information about actually using cryptocurrencies, waiting for some type of a bull run, maybe they plan on doing it in sequence. Maybe, I mean, I would assume as a major company, Ripple, they probably are keen on making a large amount of money. So they probably, especially if they're working with other banks around the world, everything is going to be synchronized and coordinated. It may not just be the time to do so. I think it is foolish to believe that a major company like Ripple, having partnered with over 250 banks, that all of these banks are just not going to be using XRP, especially because we've heard from the CEO of Ripple last year that at least... Two dozen banks are going to be using XRP by the end of this year. I just, me, myself, believe that they're waiting until the end of this year, summertime, autumn, who knows, to announce all this information. Hope you understand what I'm saying. I, it's, it's a bit too coincidental for the SCB of Thailand to just happen to type in two full sentences. You know, you know how difficult it is to type in a sentence by mistake and have it all make sense and uh, legible and then to put a period at the end of it. This was done, I don't want to say on purpose. I rather, I think that they thought that they were allowed to finally release information. It appears that they were not and therefore this was deleted. Um, just a lot of rumors and stuff happening in the, more so in the Ripple space. I think that a lot of banks and institutions are very giddy uh flushed with excitement i would also say i finally releasing this information because you I'm, I'm i assume that they're also very interested as well this also could make sense as to why we've been seeing over the last like two or three months we've seen a large amount of movement of xrp from the ripple company that they have in escrow major amounts flowing to obviously you know accounts that we just can't you know we have no idea who they're going to but it would make a lot of sense if they're partnering with anywhere from two to four major banks every single week that at some point during the month when they're sending you know 250,000 uh, 250 million 100 million 50 million XRP around these are probably going to some of these institutions anyway as of now these are all rumors obviously except for the American Express thing uh but I find it weird I I, I don't know I feel like a lot of this stuff is happening behind the scenes but they may not just be able to release it yet. I mean, by I mean uh, to give it a time frame, we only have until the end of this year. This is what I told everyone else before. I still like Ripple, like what they do. I like that they're trying to get rid of the old banking world. I like that they're trying to integrate cryptocurrency systems into it. More transparency for banks, as we've seen them before, completely destroy, uh, nearly destroy the world's financial system. Anyway, uh, like the time frame that I said that I was giving them is going to be by the end of this year. Why the end of this year? Because once again, the CEO of Ripple announced that by the end of 2019, we would have two dozen banks who were going to be using the XRP cryptocurrency. As of yet, none of these have been announced explicitly, except for this one kind of slipping and announcing that they were going to be using it by the end of this year. And I'm going to give them a little bit of a um, uh, I can't even think of the word. Even if they only have, I mean, to be fair, even if they only announce a dozen banks or even six major banks who are going to be using XRP, that is clearly a win for them as they are not a very old company. They have a lot of money flowing around them and behind them. And I think even just getting six major banks to announce that they're going to be using XRP, a cryptocurrency that's not even that old, it's like a third, half the age of Bitcoin. It's quite significant. And that's all the XRP rumor news. And finally, let's move on. Next up, Litecoin is actually in the news. Charlie Lee made a rare appearance in a YouTube video interview to discuss Litecoin's current position and future plans. Taking a deep dive into the entrepreneur's mindset, Lee said, 
I created Litecoin mostly for fun. I wanted to mimic the gold and silver relationship between Bitcoin and Litecoin, where Bitcoin, Bitcoin, okay, is good for store value and Litecoin is good for payments. Lee further acknowledged that he never expected Litecoin's success in re retaining its trading value since inception. He attributed the altcoins, gr uh, altcoins, altcoins growth to not only Bitcoin's bull run and slow transaction speeds, but also to the activation of SegWit on the blockchain. Additionally, he highlighted the fact that no coin would be for everything and for everyone. In order to simplify the stark difference, the leader of the Litecoin Foundation clarified, he said, Litecoin is less decentralized and less secure than Bitcoin, but it optimizes for faster transactions, lower fees, and more bandwidth. This feature made us target the micro transaction space. One of the main reasons for Bitcoin's comparatively low transaction speeds was that miners were trying to find the highest fee pay transactions and mine those for greater profits. Lee also shared that there were mechanisms in place which prevent miners from increasing colluding mining fees, which would eventually create a good supply and demand for miners until finding balance fees for users as well. I actually had an... Uh, when Litecoin first came out, there were many other coins that were very popular at the time. It was like Vertcoin, Worldcoin. Oh uh, gosh, what were the other ones? I think it was Bitcoin Dark. It was a lot of really weird other coins that were kind of floating around. And I remember when Litecoin came out, it was kind of this really odd thing. It was kind of the same, not exactly the same, obviously, but it was kind of the same as when Dogecoin came out. I think a lot of people were creating coins as a, either a joke or fun, just to kind of see what would end up happening. And I don't think that a lot of people actually expected their coins to still be around at this point, especially Dogecoin, which is still being traded and still incredibly popular in the cryptocurrency space. A lot of people about a day or two ago, were really upset. I mean, I think at this point, I, I, I think at this point it's very interesting or easy to be upset with Charlie Lee. It's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, people were upset that he said that he made Litecoin mostly for fun. I think people were expecting him to say that he made Litecoin to take over the establishment or he made it to so-and-so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. It's okay if he created it for fun. It, I mean, I don't think he expected in 2000, what was it, 12 or 13, uh, that he would make a multi-billion dollar cryptocurrency. I don't think that anybody assumed around that time that they would create anything digital uh, next to Bitcoin. No, no one assumed that Bitcoin would ever hit multiple thousands of dollars. That just wasn't a thing in people's heads. And it's, it's now when we have people calling for a multi million dollar bitcoin it seems a little abstract and kind of insane but it's kind of the same as i think for litecoin the same as i think for dogecoin like the guy said he he, he made it as a joke as for fun and then people are still using it and i think it's is it over a cent or something like that now and people ha i have seen people calling for like a a one dollar dogecoin that's completely anyway the point is uh, a lot of people were upset with charlie lee i think people like to be upset just in general the the the, the comments that i've seen on my videos the last like four videos uh, and I, and I know for a fact that these aren't, these aren't, uh, normal people who've been watching my videos for a very long time. I mean, you can be upset all you want. I'm not going to stop making YouTube videos. I'm sorry if you don't like my voice. I'm sorry if you don't like how quickly I talk or how slow I talk or anything else I might do in the channel, but then maybe the channel's just not for you. You can't please everyone. That's kind of just how things are anyway. Oh, uh, let's move on. Next up. This one may not seem important, but I'll get to exactly why it's very important. According to Google Trends, the term Bitcoin is one of the most popular right now on the planet's leading search engine. In fact, it's currently outperforming some of the most consistent popular terms over the last few years. Google Trends is a fantastic tool for comparing how different search phrases compare in terms of popularity. It therefore provides a window into what the internet users... Oh, yeah, there we go. Of the world are passionate about one of those things right now is Bitcoin. According to a post by Ethereum-focused blockchain software company known as Consensus, the term Bitcoin is being searched for will... Okay, it was... Okay, it's not just me. Someone wrote this all incorrectly. Searched for will more frequently... Yeah, that, 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 that's not correct. Than many other consist constantly popular searches. When compared with terms like Donald Trump, Consensus founders found that the last 12 months have been... I've seen the most two popular searches jostle for dominance with Bitcoin breaking out in recent months. Uh, with, this, is, this is all destroying me. Uh, unsurprisingly, it says searches for the U.S. president dominate over those for Bitcoin in North America. Meanwhile, in South America, Europe, Australia, and much of Asia, people are searching for the word Bitcoin more than they are searching for the word Donald Trump. The point is, after all of this, uh, is that 
In 2017, people, re or rather, in 2018, I'll put it to you this way, in 2018, people realized that in 2017, the search trends for Bitcoin had completely outperformed just about everything else that was out there. Everyone, every couple of seconds was searching for the word Bitcoin or crypto or cryptocurrencies, but it all had to do with the cryptocurrency space. And this was also apparently a... A bit of a precursor to cryptocurrency prices actually going up because the more people that are searching for the term cryptocurrencies the more of an indication that it was that people were actually looking to buy bitcoin in 2017 one of the other big phrases that people were searching for was like how to buy bitcoin or simply the word coinbase when people were looking for coinbase it usually correlated to them going to coinbase signing up to coinbase buying bitcoin on coinbase and when they bought bitcoin on coinbase the price of bitcoin went up and the more that the price of bitcoin went up you can assume more people were searching for the word Bitcoin to be able to buy more Bitcoin. So it was this really weird circular pattern. And this is exactly what we're seeing once again is that Bitcoin is actually dominating a lot of search results on Google, which could be an indication that the prices are going to go back up or that. That's well, that's kind of it. That's what the that's what the searches actually indicate is that more people are looking for ways to actually buy Bitcoin because Right now, I don't have it in this video. It didn't seem pertinent to the discussion that we're having. Is that a lot of people think that Bitcoin could be on its way to ten thousand dollars. That the last couple of dips that we have had have been people trying to push the price down to be able to see if we had reached a bottom in price, if prices would rebound, which they have three times, and therefore a lot of people are now saying that they are extremely more bullish than they were before on Bitcoin, and this could be an indicator as more people are searching for it, and therefore people are searching to buy because they see that there have been uh, three bottoms, if you kind of want to say it that way. Anyway, yeah, like I said, it's not the craziest news story in the entire world, but it's very, it could be indicative of where the cryptocurrency space is going to go over the next couple of weeks. Here's an insane one. I don't understand what's happening in that country. Indian lawmakers have reportedly proposed to enforce a 10-year jail term for citizens who deal with cryptocurrencies, local financial news outlet Bloomberg Quint reported on the 6th of June. The new tough crypto regulation is also part of a recently proposed draft bill called Banning Cryptocurrencies and Regulation of the Official Digital Currency Bill 2019, according to a report by crypto news outlet The Block. The regulation will reportedly relate to those who hold, mine, buy and sell cryptocurrencies so anything pertaining to cryptocurrencies as well as those who deal with cryptocurrencies directly or indirectly in the country how do you deal with something indirectly and then still get a jail sentence if passed india's bill will order cryptocurrency holders to declare their crypto assets within 90 days and to dispose the assets in accordance with the prescription of the central government the report notes the bill includes a penalty system that reportedly envisions fines within worth a threefold amount from the loss caused to the system or from the gains of crypto holders, according to the block considered as cognizable and non bailable. My goodness. The offense can also lead to a 10 year jail sentence for those who break the new rules. So it's taking a step back. It's a couple things. I saw another news article posting about this and they actually had the i don't know i don't think they actually have it in here no uh there are over a billion people in india and the, the report pretty much had it was like if india passes this law 16 percent of all people on the planet will never be able to hold crypto and that's when it kind of hits you a little bit more because the one billion sounds you know insane because it is when you realize that there's a government that's even proposing something like this this is when you know it's getting a little out of hand. A couple of years ago, one of the first things that I learned about the cryptocurrency space, I can't remember the exact term for it. It was something about uh, they ignore you, they fight you, they so-and-so, they did something, something, and then they join you. It's, it's this really weird period where they don't take you seriously. They kind of peer over your shoulder to see what you're doing. They start to take you seriously, and then the other one is that they really try to, try to fight back as much as they possibly can because they realize that they've not been paying attention for a couple of years, and therefore they need to try and dismantle whatever you're trying to do, whatever the, you know, the thing might be at that time, so that they can retain power. A lot of governments around the world did not care about cryptocurrencies, and I'm sure a couple of them are still not caring. Uh, there was something about the current, I think, Brazilian president who said that he doesn't even know what a blockchain or Bitcoin was. This happened a couple of days ago, so I'm certain 
around the world, a lot of people are just not understanding or do not want to understand exactly what cryptocurrencies are. I think that it's gotten, finally, the wind has blown to India and they now understand the prospects of what cryptocurrencies could do to their country. And this is why I believe that someone has proposed a bill called Banning Cryptocurrencies and the Regulation of Digital Currencies 2019 because it also appears, it says somewhere around here, the, the new bill reportedly proposed the development of a new national cryptocurrency called the Digital Rupee. While India's Central Bank, the Reserve Bank of India, reportedly postponed its plans to release a central bank digital currency in early 2019. I don't know if this is going to go through However, once again, the fact that this has been proposed and that there is a possibility that it could go through is absolutely insane. The idea this is this is being done because uh, one. A lot of countries around the world are not doing very well. There's a lot of mismanaged funds. I do not live in India, but I have heard from many people living in India, also from people in India who write in the crypto, the crypto section, the comment section below that apparently things are rough as far as when it comes to the government. I have heard allegedly that their government is apparently very corrupt. Uh, a lot of mismanagement of funds, uh, a lot of not helping the actual general public, and this is not good. That's kind of the nicest way of saying it. So they have finally, whoever wrote this bill, come to the conclusion that cryptocurrencies are going to completely dismantle the status quo as it were within their country. Being able to say that someone who mines holds buys or sells deals directly or indirectly with cryptocurrencies will receive a 10-year jail sentence is absolutely insane i don't know once again if this is going to pass through i am interested to see the implications and the ramifications of something like this ending up passing and i mean this as far as being able to think that you're able to tell First of all, you can't control cryptocurrencies. It's impossible. This is why they're trying to... This is, these are all scare tactics. These are always things to say, you can't do this because we're going to penalize you. No one controls cryptocurrencies. So the thought that someone can write a bill, can write, write ink on a piece of paper and say, we're going to declare that something that we can't control can't be touched by people within our country. Like, like it's, 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 it's a very weird idea to be able to think that you can even say something like that. I wonder, the, and, and I mean as far as the, the future um, ramifications of something like this, as far as if cryptocurrencies, IF, if, no one knows, take off completely, and the world at large is using cryptocurrencies, we get news and indications that people are using XRP, people are riding on top of Ethereum, people are so-and-so-and-so-and-so, new video games on EOS, Tron is the biggest gambling place in the entire world, all of this stuff ends up happening, and Bitcoin ends up passing by a $100,000 you know, price per coin, and then we end up getting a quarter of a million dollar Bitcoin, Bitcoin is then stronger than the US dollar, and it starts taking over other currencies around the world, and other people are basing their economies on cryptocurrencies, what then happens to a country who has banned cryptocurrencies, who has made sure that they are not a part of the cryptocurrency space, what then happens to their economy? Well, I mean, I can tell you what happens, it, it completely collapses. So I hope that they are intelligent enough to not push something like this through. I think it would be a major handicap for their system moving forward i think that they know or are rather i hope that they see what's going on i hope that they see what's happening around the rest of the world when you get major financial powerhouses talking about getting into the cryptocurrency space banks talking about using cryptocurrencies and then you make sure that no one within your country can even touch them hold them whether directly or indirectly is a bit insane uh, we should, and I mean, and I'm writing should in capital bolded letters with little stars around it, should be hearing relatively soon from the Indian government as to exactly what they're planning on doing with the cryptocurrency space. Because to be fair, this is not the first country who has proposed a ban. We've also had uh, politicians within the United States who have also come forward and said that they think that cryptocurrency should also be banned. I don't think there was a jail sentence uh, being a part of it, but uh, we have a lot of politicians out there who are, I believe, horridly afraid of what the cryptocurrency space is going to bring. I think that they're finally realizing that after 10 years of Bitcoin being around, that it is something to, uh, is a force to be reckoned with. That's kind of the nicest way of saying it. Anyway, 
I thought this was insane. Even even having the audacity to think this or even think about proposing something like this shows how out of touch uh, politicians and other people around the world kind of are. It's it's really it, imagine trying to. For those of you who've been in the cryptocurrency space for longer than three months, you understand that you can't control cryptocurrencies. And to think that you can try to ban something that you have no control over, that you never touched, that you never created, that you probably don't even run a node for or don't even know what a node is for, is completely abstract in my mind. It's, it's kind of completely insane. Here's the actual article from Bloomberg Quint about the proposal of a 10-year jail sentence for cryptocurrency use. Yeah, let's move on. To kind of finish things up, the technology behind the cryptocurrency known as NEO, formerly known as Ant Shares, will be completely reconfigured by this time next year. In April, NEO co-founder Eric Tsang announced that, that an optimized version of the blockchain network will run or relaunch as NEO 3.0. In 2020, we finally have a bit more information about exactly what's going to be happening. The underlying infrastructure will be so different that token holders will need to turn in their assets for newly issued tokens. Uh-huh. Tsang told Coindesk this process will not require know your customer information as the Singapore-based NEO Foundation will simply destroy the old assets and airdrop new tokens to designated wallets. He said users only need to keep their private keys. New tokens will be automatically dropped to their new wallet address. Tsang said adding community leaders will work on exchanges to swap any token stored there. We need to make sure that old tokens and new tokens don't flow at the same time. These tokens have been circulating for years, so it's hard to say how a centralized point of distribution will impact the ecosystem. A financial report from the NEO Foundation revealed exclusively to Coindesk showed the ICO in 2016 raised $97,000 plus 8,100 Bitcoin, the latter of which was mostly liquidated, liquidated, liquidated for more than $8.3 million in February 2018. Meanwhile, around 100,000 unclaimed NEO tokens that, according to the foundation, people brought during crowdfunding sales never added to their wallet, whatever, so and so and so. Uh, it's a bit odd. I'm wondering how they're going to do this. I want, when you talk, I mean, when you talk about centralization and you hear news, that EOS is centralized, XRP is centralized. I've heard a lot of talk about uh, Litecoin being centralized a couple of times recently, lately. And you get news that there is going to be a single point where you have to send your coins to be able to get your coins airdropped from a single point. It's a little weird. Um, we don't typically hear about NEO a lot. I had NEO before in the past. I no longer hold NEO. I think it's a very weird project that I don't want to be a part of. I think that there, if you, if you put it into comparison, NEO was created as a competitor to Ethereum. I don't think that they've been doing very well. If you put them in the same box as Ethereum, EOS, Tron, and Cardano, they're not even remotely close. Uh, so I never hear about NEO. I'm sure a lot of other people also never hear about NEO. Uh, I have completely stepped away from the project, but I know that a lot of people do still like NEO for whatever reason. Like I said before, uh, people bought Bitcoin too. People buy uh, SV. So I mean, everyone has their uh, everyone has their poison. Anyway, yeah, that is the NEO news uh, for today. As always, an incredibly large thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Professor Wally from Gunbot University, SC Verzali Fine Art, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Brady Neilds, L. Doug, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight Owl, Shaolin Fried Rice, Gil Boa Snake, Crypto Joe, Mohair Maroney, Carl Birchinoff, Singer Songwriter Mike Savitz, Rai Rai, Yasha Harari, Amy Starsheen, Jeffrey Ramsey, Crip Nautic, Clara T. Snowden, Crypto Artist Coldy 3D, Nicholas One Earth One Piece One Love, Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Rich the Third, RF Dusty, Cody, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Sam, Siri, Vaseline, Jeremy the Photographer, Jim Gardner, Minting Coins, Arthur Yaku, Nick Manjalavori, Anthony Charles, and Meh Can Nick. Thank you all very much for your support. I do appreciate it. At the moment, 
The market's not doing too bad. Bitcoin is over $8,000 once again, depending on where you look. Sometimes it shows $7,920. This website happens to be showing $8,007. Market's not doing too bad. A lot of, uh, a lot of people, I mean, I don't know. People are saying, this is kind of where it gets really fuzzy. A lot of people are saying, analysts are quoting that Litecoin and Ether apparently are showing very bullish signs. Uh, they've dropped down multiple times and have not gone past down a certain point. Litecoin has maintained over $100 and therefore people think that there could be the potential for further future gains as we move towards the reward being cut in half. Same exact thing for Ethereum. Apparently there's something happening with Ethereum behind the scenes, some type of a bullish behavior, movement, golden croissant, all the other things that are happening, so and so and so. At the moment, I think nothing's doing extremely well. For some reason, Monero is up by 10%. Uh, at the time of me looking, there wasn't any significant Monero news, so nothing really kind of pushes it that way. I assume that Neo's up because of their whatever they're doing. A lot of other coins also just kind of seem to have their own uh, little movements going on. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I hope that you all enjoyed. I hope that you all have a fantastic time today. Go outside, do something, get some air if it's raining or snowing. I don't think it, it shouldn't be snowing anywhere. Definitely should not be snowing anywhere. If it is snowing near you, Stay inside, watch a movie, call your friends over, order some pizza, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.